Hello, everybody. You're watching The Political Vigilante. Look at that. The graphics pop up. They're so fancy. Um, so I want to talk about uh, this article, The First Two Muslim Women in Congress Defend the BDS Movement. So BDS is Boycott, Divest, um, and Strike or Sanction, I believe. Um, it's basically it's, it's holding um, Israel accountable for what it's doing to the Palestinians. Now, me saying that doesn't make me anti-Semitic. It doesn't mean I hate Jews or anything like that. I've got good friends who have children in the Israeli army. Um, it doesn't mean I support Hamas and terrorism by saying that. I'm saying when unarmed people, when someone with a rock gets shot by a soldier with a gun, that's not right. When land is being taken, that's not right. And outside of the United States, the world is, the, 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 the media is way more critical of the policies of the Israeli government. When ex-Israeli soldiers are like, wait a minute, this ain't right, man. This ain't right. And now they're trying to pass a law that's saying that if you support BDS, you're like, it's making it illegal. Which is you can't make boycotting something illegal. Imagine that. So there's a business in your neighborhood that you don't like their financial practices and you want to boycott, they're saying that's illegal. You want to boycott one of the banks that supports the Dakota Access Pipeline, that's illegal now? That's what they want to pass? You want your city to divest from fossil fuels because you are worried that we're not doing enough to prevent, to, to reverse climate change? That's illegal now? That's what they want to do? That's what Marco Rubio wants to do? The Senate is likely to pass legislation drafted by Florida's Marco Rubio, a top recipient of pro-Israel money that would allow states and local governments to cut business ties with companies that participate in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. There it is, sanctions which aims to put economic pressure on Israel to recognize Palestinians' human rights. Although the Supreme Court ruled in 1982 that boycotts are constitutionally protected speech, they want to rewrite the Constitution. 26 states have passed similar legislation targeting the BDS movement. But I want to show you this. Jamil Dakwar, blue check. Make no mistake about it. These are the two congresswomen, Rashid uh, Talib and uh, Ilan uh, and Ilan Omar. If they called to boycott and impose sanctions on other countries, but not Israel, for gross human rights violations, they would be warmly welcomed and hailed as human rights champions. See the hypocrisy in this. A human rights violation is a human rights violation. It doesn't matter if it happens by us, the Israelis, Russia, China, the Saudis. It doesn't matter. It's a human rights. We all have human rights. It doesn't matter. It's not right. A human right violation is wrong. And we as human beings should do something about it. These two women are trying to do something about it. They've only been in Congress a month. I applaud them for this. And they're attacked. They're attacked. This respect for free speech does not equate to anti-Semitism. See? Ms. Tlaib wrote, defending economic boycotts as peaceful and constitutionally protected. So when I say vote with your dollars, they're trying to say that's constitutionally, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm committing a crime. I can't say that. <laughs> See how this works? So then if I say don't shop at Whole Foods because it's owned by Amazon and they don't have a union and they're trying to bust unions for their workers, don't shop there until they get unions for their employees and union wages. So boycott them. Boycott those stores. Does, do, 
am I going to get arrested now? That's constitutionally protected freedom of speech for me to say boycott a business or a country and for you to say, you're right, I'm going to not spend my money. I'm going to boycott. I want my school that my kids go to or where I teach at or my business to not give money to this. Fill in the blank. It doesn't have to just be Israel. If China has committed a lot of human rights violations and everybody gets all up in arms and rights really so, a human rights violation is a human rights violation. Would, would we tolerate this? If the Chinese government was, was spending all this money on all of our politicians to say they couldn't t talk badly about China, they couldn't boycott and divest and sanction China? Can you imagine that? Imagine that for a second. I dream of my Palestinian grandmother living with equal rights and human dignity one day and would never allow that dream to be tainted by any other form of hate. Here's what Ms. Omar wrote. She sought to turn the tables on Republicans, especially at a time when white supremacist violence is on the rise, she wrote. We all need to condemn hate against any religious group, something the current president has shamefully failed to do. How beautifully articulated is that? Because there's videos of it, of Israeli shoulders and Israelis sitting there watching Palestinians getting shot. There's ex-Israeli soldiers going, man, it wasn't right how we treated them. We treated them as less than. We violated their human rights. It's not right if we do it there. It's not right when a hate crime happens in America, when some white supremacists, they just killed three Asian guys in New York. It's awful. They're not more or less worse. The 9-11 terrorist attacks, awful. Awful. The bombing at, at, uh, during the Boston Marathon, horrible, horrible. And so is this. <laughs> Even so, Mr. Ben, Emmy said the two, speaking about these two congresswomen, are opening up a discussion that is absolutely needed in American policy and are helping to pull the Democratic Party more toward the view espoused by J Street and younger liberal Jews. Mr. Ben, I mean, he works for this, this uh, J Street, which is a, a, a liberal Jewish uh, organization and publication, I believe who believe that you can be sympathetic to the state of Israel and also sympathetic to the plight of Palestinian people. Yeah, that's the other thing. Saying that I'm sympathetic to the plight of Palestinian people doesn't mean I want to wipe Israel off the map. How about we're sympathetic to all human beings? How about that? Isn't that a crazy idea? I don't know who said that. Jesus, Muhammad said it, Buddha said it. Those three all said it. So why don't we actually try to implement those ideas? And one of the ways you have to do that is financial pressure by boycotting stuff. That's what it's going to take. I applaud these two congresswomen for, for, for stepping up. And they should be supported. So progressive comedy tour is coming to the Gulf States March 10th through the 13th. We're going to Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, Oxford, Mississippi, Pensacola, Florida, and New Orleans. Get your tickets at GrahamElwood.com. In April, we're going to Texas. We're going to Fort Worth. We're going to Houston. We're going to San Antonio. We're going to Austin. In May, we're going to Salt Lake City in Boston. In June, we're doing the East Coast. Currently, we have D.C. We have uh, New Haven, Connecticut. We have New York City and we just added Baltimore. I'll put the Baltimore ticket link is uh, there as well at GrahamElwood.com and I'm headlining a bunch of venues, events of Zanies in Chicago this month, the end of February, February 21 through March 2nd. Come out to the shows, like, subscribe and go to the Patreon. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month and you get a lot of great bonus and exclusive content.